make the grate, which is the use of perlite and wild clay along with a little bit of sand. And I'm gonna mix all that together and set it flat on here. So I'll do that now. So I like to keep my domes more um, circular and I feel like that just helps with um, getting more of an even firing around all my pieces. How wide my grate's going to be, but I'm going to leave about maybe an inch or two on the side so my holes are really going to be closer in here towards the middle and I'm doing that because I want this edge to sit on the sand um, because it's going to have to have a ledge for that grate to sit on. I'm going to want about an inch to two inches of grate that does not have holes in it that I can just sit on the sand um, and that will be really sturdy and it will hold all my pieces that I sit in the middle here. All right, so after you dig out your template for the grate, you're just gonna wanna make sure that the bottom is flat, as flat as you can get it. I mean, you don't have to put a level on it or anything, but eyeball it and make sure that it looks relatively flat and then make sure it's the right depth for you um, for me with the wild clay that I'm using it gets very very sturdy whenever I fire it it's not it's very dense um, and then mixing it with the perlite just helps with it not cracking at higher temperatures so I think two to three inches for me and the clay that I'm using should be good. So just verify that you've got it to the right depth and that everything's flat. So now what I'm gonna do after I've done all that is I'm going to add perlite and I'm just gonna put about half perlite in here. All right, so I've added about half of this with perlite. The rest is gonna be the clay. So I'm gonna fill up clay next to the top. And then once I get the clay up to the top and I've patted it all out, then I'll knead it and mix it in um, and probably do like a ram wedge and that should be good. All right, so that's about half and half. Now all you need to do is mix it together and then re-flatten it out with that mixed perlite in there. And then after you get done with that, you'll poke some holes in it. We'll dig a hole into the side connecting up to it. And um, you can either just let it sit and dry out or um, I've even, I've fired this one up the same day and that one's about eight inches thick. So. This one's only gonna be about three to four inches thick, um, but you could also dry it out same day. All right, after you get done mixing it, it should look something like this. Anytime you push into it, you should be able to feel that perlite at every level. It is gonna be a little bit crumbly, crumblier feeling, uh, but that's what you want. So, I'm just gonna pat this out with my feet because it's pretty easy doing it that way. Get it back into your original shape that you had and my goal is to make this smaller than this one so 
width wise it already is but I would like to make it small enough so that I don't have to use a lot of fuel and this is probably going to be the only way to do it so I'm just going to I might use more than see now that that's spread out a little bit more after tamming it down that's why you need to make sure um, whenever you're making your template to get your walls almost to a 90 degree so whenever you pat this out it doesn't splay over the top like mine just did um, you know that's just a little bit more time to put into it but um, it, it's worth it if you don't have a lot of material I fortunately do so it's not that big of a deal for me so I'll just make the width of uh, my edges a little bit wider so I'm gonna go two to three inches so really all I want is maybe like maybe like that for the firebox you know obviously more circular would be nice um, but you know something like that so once I've determined the size, all I'm gonna do is make my holes and you can do that with your finger. You can use a, a stick. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I think this is wide enough that I can reach all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just gonna stick my finger in. Let's see if I can touch the bottom here. And I can just barely touch the bottom. So that's about three inches. And all you want to do are make holes. Well, make sure this stays flat. You don't want to just force your hand and make an imprint onto this. But make sure this is flat so you can still set stuff on it. But all you're going to do is just start making your holes. And the more you have, the more heat's going to be able to come through here. And it'll give it uh, more even disbursement. So just make sure whenever you're making your next hole that you don't cave this one in. So I'm gonna do this now. All right, so it should look something like this. And now I'm trying to do is get all these holes open back up. And I might need to use a stick or something because my hand now that I've pushed in all these holes it's kind of raised the middle up a little bit so I mean may need to come in with a stick to get all these holes perfect but you want something like this uh, remember these this the reason this edge is here is so that it can hold onto a ledge so I'm only gonna be digging the width of this circle right here so when I come in through the side I'm gonna make sure that the furthest I go back is to this hole. And then I'm gonna make sure I can get my finger through there so that there's airflow. I'm gonna do that with each and every hole. Um, and then after I get done with that, I'll build up the chimney and I'll insulate it with sand. And that'll be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fix up these uh, holes a little bit. And then I'll show you how to dig into this all right so i got the holes a little bit more uniform here um but the main thing after you get done doing that is to come back around and make sure that there are no sharp edges on uh, on your grape because as it dries and whenever you put pottery on top of it it will rub against the bottom of it and it will scrape it um, so keep that in mind so just make sure that after you get done doing the holes to take the time to maybe smooth out some of these cracks and flatten it if you need to flatten it you could add more clay and maybe a little bit of sand mixed in with the clay and just put it on top to kind of level this out in some of these divoted areas but 
really the main thing that I would be concerned with is sharp edges. If you don't want your pieces to get scratches or anything on them, make sure that you smooth out all these holes. All right.